So we're going to go back to the reverse method of bleeding the brakes um, because there are still air bubbles in it, no matter how many systems I've used. So I've used the reverse method, I've used the normal method, I'm now going to, so I've raised the brakes up, so I've uh, basically suspended the brake lines from the ceiling uh, and let the air naturally go to the top and then crack it open the following morning and I'm still getting pockets of air in there. Uh, so I came out last night and I did the uh, reverse bleed method again and actually had some success. I had some air come through. So today I'm going to use some clean brake fluid, this one, and I'm going to reverse uh, reverse bleed the brakes again and pushing that new fluid through. So I thought I'd take you along for the ride because now I actually see that there is some progress using this method, it's probably worth going through and showing those that have never used it before. And I'll put my hands up, I hadn't used it before, uh, I haven't used this method before um, with any success. So yesterday's was the first success. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, the first things we need are the tools that we're gonna do, that we're going to use. So the first one is an eight mil ring spanner, which I'm gonna to use to crack the bleed nipple over. Um, I'm also going to need some DOP4 fluid, uh, which is, you buy a litre, you're never going to need more than, unfortunately enough, you're not going to need more than probably a couple of mil or a couple of hundred mil of this stuff. So buying a litre is, I don't know, it's up to you. Um, so the other one is you are going to need a syringe and you are going to need a piece of pipe that fits over both the syringe and the bleed nipple end. So the first thing to do is to take out the plunger. Nice. Second job is to put the, um, we're putting the, the, the spanner, or the ring spanner is already on the bleed nozzle. And then we're gonna attach the pipe. Finger in there, right, brand new bottle. And we're gonna put some dot four brake fluid in. Might as well fill it up. Not too far, obviously, because the plunger's gotta go in. And then crack the bleed nipple open. And let that fill in because like, there's an air bubble in there. So that will come up. There you go. You'll see that big air bubble come through. Push that in. And watch that fill up. Okay guys, so what we're looking at here is the pot. So there's two pots on either side. Now I've reverse bled the brakes, but as you can see, the rear pot is slightly further back or recessed than the front. So what happens is when I push, you can see the pressure building up. Let me just see if I can get, there you go. So you can see I, I'm building up the pressure. I'm seeing now if I can get the pressure to push her out because that, is a pain in the you can see her moving, but is she gonna come out? I'm hoping she'll come into the same. Let's just keep going for a couple of minutes and then we'll see. She looks like the pressure is building. Okay, so the issue I'm having is the banjo bolt is, if you imagine that to be the banjo bolt, um, bolt, imagine that to be the banjo bolt, we have two lines. Now, this, the, the closest line to the master cylinder, which is this one, basically that is, that is bled all the way through and you can apply pressure and you can see those calipers as well. I've just shown you, can see those calipers now moving its caliper. I'm not getting exactly the same from this side, so it's the cable that's furthest away. Now, um, 
it looks like it's building pressure on that side but not building pressure which means there must be air still in this one now i've pushed probably i want to say about 300 mil through that caliper up to the master cylinder and it's made no uh, made no difference whatsoever so what i'm going to do is actually take the caliper now off of the uh of the fork so i'm going to take the caliper off have a look, put something in there and start squeezing the brake so I can actually visibly see what's going on. So that will be the next step. Now the danger is it's actually tighter than it looks and what you actually end up doing is having them push those brake calipers back. So it's just a quick wiggle. And actually it feels tight against them, which is weird. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something of equal size between so it actually can't clamp it because obviously once it does I'll be stuck. All right, so we have so what we've done is push the, uh, the spanner through to kind of take the pressure on and off. So when I, now I'm going to squeeze this, are you? You know what's going to happen. I'm going to squeeze this. It's going to clamp onto the spanner and I'm not going to get the spanner out and then I'm going to have to release the pressure manually. But what this may do is force the, uh, the one side of the calipers to do, but they do look, I've got to be honest, they look fine. Let me just quickly put a light in there. Right, so there is a slight gap on that one. And that is the one that I'm seeing the issue with. What I'm going to do while I'm here is just gently Okay, so I've kind of taken it off now, kind of giving it a bang around, see if I can get some any free air, go up the cable. I'm going to drive some more through there now and see what I get. If I can release the, uh, the spanner. Hey, easy enough. There you go, so she'll fill the pipe up. Make sure you fill the pipe up before opening the valve, otherwise you're just going to be introducing and pushing air in. So wait till the bubbles come up. Crack her up all the way and then watch that fuel level, sorry, watch that brake level come on. Give some strange air, there's no air coming out though. I can see the, the level rising. Oh, she's a mystery to me. I can reach under the bike. All right. Alright, that's it. So again, don't worry, you want that on the... Okay, that's that. Let's push the rest of it through. See what we get. Oh, what was that? Okay, no air. But did just hear something. Now the brake fluid I've gone through, lucky it comes in one litres because I probably pushed about a litre through it to be honest. All right. Ah, we have air. We just had a bubble coming up. That's interesting. Now that is interesting. We just had a great bubble come up through the system. The brakes now work and um, taking that caliper, that caliper there didn't work particularly well or I wasn't getting the movement or I couldn't see any visible movement and I couldn't see the pot coming out to meet the brake either. I've taken that off, banged it around, by hook or by crook I've put that back on, pressed the brake on and I've left that open 
pumped it and what it's actually done is I've just seen some air come out so maybe I dislodged something but I've put a light on the brake and I can see now that the brake is making contact with the disc in both directions so that is it the brakes are done um, and to be honest I was hoping that was going to be a 10 minute job because what I wanted to do was take the air box off fill that with fuel and see if I can get it running for longer than 30 seconds and start diagnosing where those car problems exist. That doesn't look like it's going to happen because what I want to do uh, is get out. I've got to get out on the bike so I shall speak to you soon. Take care, take it easy, ride safe, 